was something. A routine traffic stop turns into a life-threatening gun battle. <laughs> Meter Maid Madness. I'm Barry Nolan. You think your job is tough? Try giving out parking tickets for a living. Our hidden camera caught parking police scuffling with scoundrels. I have a BMW sitting here on the street. Leave the thing sitting here. Recipes for revenge. I'm Diane Diamond. A disturbing report for restaurant diners. See what can happen if you don't treat your waiter with care. You could be treated to a topping that's not on the menu. You go on the back and you spit on it. Drew's Family Secrets. I'm Jerry Penacoli. The woman behind Drew Barrymore's jaded upbringing tells all about their mother-daughter relationship. Plus, why Mel Gibson got dogged at one college campus. And Carmen electrifies the Baywatch Beach. Hi, I'm Terry Murphy. And I'm Barry Nolan. You're watching Hard Copy for Wednesday, February 19th. Talk about your lucky lawmen. A routine traffic stop turns into a wild shootout. Their brush with death was caught on tape. And Doug Buckner has the explosive scene in tonight's Top Copy. It started as a stop for expired plates in a college town northeast of Cincinnati. But what state troopers didn't know, the Suburban was a rolling arsenal. And you're about to see one of the fiercest shootouts ever captured on video. 22 seconds of hell on a cold Ohio highway. At first, the driver seems cooperative. But police say when they tried to search him off camera, the driver bolted back toward the vehicle, and then things explode out of control. The passenger escapes into a woods. The officers now try to at least stop the driver. With all the bullets flying, only one person gets a minor injury, but there's to be more shooting. A short time later, a woman, the police officer, spotted that Chevy Suburban going into a parking lot. Uh, he pulled in behind the vehicle. The driver exited with a rifle, fired a number of rounds at the Wilmington police officer, and then also fled. Police still haven't caught the suburban driver or the passenger. As the manhunt continues, the highway patrol's reviewing this video. A patrol spokesman says the driver didn't appear at first to be armed, and agency policy forbids a trooper from shooting unless in a life-threatening situation. Did the officer, uh, specifically the trooper, act within our policy and procedure? That's something that we'll be taking a look at. But it's very easy for us to sit kind of in a 50-yard line in our nice warm homes or uh, apartments and kind of second-guess those officers. Those officers are reacting based on training, and they have to work within certain parameters of what they are and not allowed to do. Officers won't confirm media reports of a possible link between the incident and a white supremacist group. Now from the front of a cab driver. Hello and welcome. I'm Barry No. And I'm Terry Murphy. You're watching Hard Copy for Thursday, February 20th. It began as a gun battle between Ohio cops and a couple of bad guys. Now it's escalated into a nationwide manhunt suggesting ties to white supremacists, even a possible Oklahoma bombing connection. Doug Buckner has tonight's top copy. I their faces are flashing on TV screens across the country. The crazed criminals who shot their way out of a routine traffic stop by Ohio cops and then fired on another officer a few miles down the road. But is this their first appearance on national TV? Is the lawless lunatic you see here the same white supremacist who spewed his hate to hard copy four years ago? I'll do it on a second. And to be honest with you, probably Jews are probably... I despise them. I really do. Ohio police were anxious to get hold of our televised interview with Chevy Kehoe. And another white supremacist profiled in our piece named Jake Settle. Now, both of these radical racists are reportedly wanted for questioning in connection with the Ohio shootout. Court documents reportedly confirm that the 1978 Chevy Suburban police pulled over is registered to Settle. Earlier reports indicated the truck belonged to this man, Sean Haynes a neo-Nazi skinhead from Washington State. He impressed me as being an uh, intelligent young man that had leadership uh, possibilities. White Aryan resistance leader Tom Metzger says Sean Haynes called him several times for advice and assistance. We talked simply uh, that we are white separatists and uh, 
you know, we need to seal the border and get these uh, Mexicans out of here and uh, the in stop the invasion and, you know, generalities that are affecting all white working people. A key question, what was Settle's truck with expired Washington plates doing in Ohio? Settle and Keogh were reportedly staying at a campground near Cincinnati. We're told they checked out on Monday, two days after the shootout with the cops, and one day after a KKK rally in Columbus, Ohio. I'm proud to be here today with my Aryan brothers and my fellow Clarkson. What makes these characters and their possible connections to this case creepy is a whole series of investigations in several states. Sean Haynes was arrested in South Dakota a few months ago in a 1978 Chevy Suburban. Kehoe is wanted for questioning in the murder of an Arkansas gun dealer. And the FBI is reportedly looking into that incident and others in connection with the conspiracy to bomb the federal building in Oklahoma City two years ago. One thing's clear, these two men shot to the top of the FBI's list of America's most wanted. Ironically, just as this videotaped shootout was released, the Supreme Court ruled that cops can legally force drivers and passengers from their cars, even if they are not suspected of a crime. In Colorado tonight, prosecutors refused to rule out John Benet Ramsey's parents as suspects in her murder. And now they are taking a closer look at the death of John Ramsey's other daughter. Jody Baskerville's in Boulder with an update. Jody? Boulder police want to know more about the life and death of John Ramsey's oldest daughter, Elizabeth. She was killed in a car accident in 1992, and now investigators believe the autopsy report may provide a possible break in the case. The 1992 autopsy report on Elizabeth Ramsey, who died in a car crash in Chicago, is now officially part of the investigation into the murder of little John Benet. Um, Boulder Police did request and have received the 1992 autopsy report of the death of Elizabeth Ramsey. This report is now part of the Boulder Police investigative file, so it would be inappropriate for me to discuss this item further. During today's media briefing, police would not reveal why they requested the autopsy report. What I can assure you that we're trying to do is sort through a mountain of information to try to figure out what exactly is relevant and what isn't relevant. But now, in another bizarre twist, a Denver radio station is asking whether Elizabeth Ramsey's autopsy could reveal that she was a victim of prior abuse. Can you confirm reports that autopsy reports show that Elizabeth Ramsey was the victim of prior abuse? As you are aware, last week Friday there was a partial release of the autopsy report. Dr. John Meyer, the Boulder County Coroner, has not attempted to interpret the information that was partially released, so it would be inappropriate for me to try to do that. Uh, do you have any guesstimate as to how long it's going to be before our suspect's named? Are we talking months here? We are taking the time we need to get this done right. Because the Ramseys have not been ruled out as suspects, cops want to keep a tight lid on what was found inside their home after the murder. Now our nightly race through the news stories from the Fuhrer over...